Yeah, I think it's robotics. Test robot. Notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's uh, make a commit. <laughs> um, I think we've done enough that we should have made a commit already. I think I had, I don't know. Oh, I guess I did not. Um, let's have a look at, oh, uh, whoops. Oh, what is it called? What is the thing that I use again called? It's, um, oh, what is it called? Terminal? Terminal. Terminal. Is that... I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you were looking for. No, it was. Uh, I'm not sure how to uh, do it anymore. Ah. Um... Uh, you'll need to go to the directory where the project is, uh, and, oh, you can see the directory there. So you would type, um, uh, cd space, and then you're probably already under users slash Ethan Fu, so then you would type cd space documents, yeah, and then uh, slash, oh, I guess it's, wait, I thought we had a, well, I guess it's directly under documents, so cd documents and then hit enter, I thought we had a directory under that specifically for this project, did we not? I'm not sure. Well, it shows that that's where the, that file is so oh are we so now that you're there type git status maybe maybe we just didn't make a a git repo for this did we just not make a git repo for this that seems that's surprising i guess we did not okay well uh uh, I guess now is a good time to make a git repo. Uh, so make a directory, mkdir, space, and then whatever you want to call the folder that contains the project, the directory that contains the project. So like robot or something. Yeah. Sure. And then, uh, CD into robot, and then hit enter, and then do git init, enter, and then do, uh, mv to move, space, dot dot slash and then what was the name of the file ball dropping dot pi so ball dropping dot pi space dot and then hit enter and then do git add ball dropping Dot pi. I'm surprised that this isn't already inside of a git repo. Did we, like, well, anyway, git commit dash m and then uh, we've done a lot of stuff. 
with this. Uh, I guess, what does it currently do? It currently, uh, bounce, fall. from window edge exactly I don't know something like that or on window edge exactly and then Oh. What's up? I don't have whatever. We don't have a thing that I can push to. A remote. Yeah, we uh we didn't set up a remote yet. Um. Uh. The code is currently just on your computer. It doesn't need to have a remote. We. Uh, okay. We can set that up. If you want. Uh, I think we can just for the stick with this for now. It's fine. Okay. Um. Okay. So then. Oh. Um. Right. Oh yeah. So. Uh. So yeah. Let's go. Let's go make that. So right now. Uh. It bounces. A little bit lower every time it bounces. But that means when it gets low enough, it starts bouncing incredibly frequently. So let's make it so that when let's let's make it so that we can detect the top of the bounce. Okay. Um. How would we do that? Um. Let's see. How would we do that from a physics perspective? When the ball starts going the opposite way. So. Yeah. We, yeah, so like we can check when the ball velocity is like becomes zero or becomes from positive to negative. Yeah, so here is where the ball velocity changes and we want to check uh so uh ball velocity y we want we want to what did you say uh check when the ball starts way so the traveling upwards means the y velocity is negative because yes. the y-axis is inverted and then traveling downwards what does that mean the ball velocity is um positive yeah so how would we check when the ball starts going the other way. We could detect exactly when it gets to zero, but it, and it will maybe sometimes do that, but I think a vast majority of the time it will be very close to zero, but never exactly equal to zero. So instead, uh, in addition to checking for zero, we should also check for a different condition. Yeah. So I guess we can say not here. So 
Kim Soo is for is wait. So how is there a way to like in wait? So I wanna so while the ball is if the ball is positive, but then it turns negative. Mm -hmm. That's turn that point when it turns positive negative is the top of the ball. Mm -hmm. Um. So okay. What I would we use? So this checks two conditions, right? So if it's positive, but then it's negative. So would we? It wouldn't. We wouldn't be using an if statement, right? Or you can use an if statement for that. Wait, is there an if and then? Wait, no, it, it, oh, this it's implied. If this, then that. Mm -hmm. But is there like uh? So if. Because you can't. How do you? How would you check the second one in the same statement? Because one, if one's happening, the other can't be true. Um. If it's positive. They can't be negative. You could say or. And that just tells us whether it's going down or up. Yeah, we want to know when it goes from up to down. So this right here is where the velocity changes. Is there a when? I don't think there is, right? Like, when statement? Okay, yeah. When some condition happens, do something? Well, that's an if, but, like, okay, how do you, okay, positive turns negative. Um, so what we would like to do is take a look at the value of this variable before changing it in this way um, and see if that is going up and then after changing it in this way and see if that is going back down. So we can save the value of this variable just before making this change. Oops. And now we have both of these variables. This will be the value that it was before making the change, and this will be the value that it is now. Mm. Er. 
this will be the value that it is now. What the heck? Oh no, it's not a comma, it's a plus. Right, it's a plus. Uh, in Python, it... Uh, in a print statement, either one of them would print out some stuff. Yeah, so... Let's see, you have if ball velocity prior is greater than zero and ball velocity is less than zero, uh, then you're gonna print ball is at and then plus ball center y Uh, minus 10? Yeah. Why, mi why minus 10? I mean, if... Uh, I don't know. I thought we were trying to look for the top edge, so I subtracted the ball radius. Oh, yeah. Oh, the ball radius. Oh, uh, okay. Since we're detecting the top of the bounce, I guess? Sure. Okay. I mean, yeah. Um, and instead of 10, I would use... It would be 20. Because the ball radius is 20, not the, not the diameter. Uh, oh, but also just the thing. Also just the variable, ball radius. Yeah. And then you don't have to remember. And if you decide to change the size of the ball, that'll be... Uh, okay. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Then we need to convert that into a string. Uh, I shouldn't have printed there. Yeah. So, you have uh, ball you have velocity a... prior. Oh, I think I wait. Greater than oh, zero. The one is greater than zero. That means it's. That means it's going up, right? Wait, if it's greater than zero. That means. That means it's going down, because the y-axis is flipped. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, I see. Nice. Wait a minute. Why does it say the ball is at its top eight for the very first one? Well, it was, it was at the very tippity top. Oh, right, right. Because <laughs> the y axis is flipped. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, wait, why did we do that? <laughs> so that we can detect when the ball is not bouncing very high. Ah, okay. And you can say here when So yeah, I'm gonna say I think rather than detecting where the top of the ball is, we would want to detect where the bottom of the ball is. Yeah. Um. Or the center of the ball would also make sense, because that makes the that would mean that we could just use ball center. But then that means our ball would be resting halfway into the floor. Just because we are keeping track of where the center of the ball is doesn't mean that the center of the ball would be at the edge of the window. Okay, I guess we can account for the radius somewhere else in our calculation. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to account for it somewhere. So yeah, I guess we could just say uh, bottom, bottom of the ball. Ball bottom is equal to uh, or bounce bottom I don't know something like that ball center y minus ball radius Something like that. Oh, yeah. Bounce. It would be bounce. Top bottom. Because if you say bounce bottom, it sounds like it's the bottom of the bounce. Oh, my code is not actually doing the bounce at all. I wonder, did I, uh, ball drop, there we go. Oh, <laughs> also mine is, uh, it has a long way to go before it reaches the bottom of its, or the, the top of its bounce. I think you made mm. an adjustment that I didn't make yeah. that made that happen I sooner. Gravity. Did you, what did you change it to? My gravity's at 50. Nice. Uh-oh. Mine didn't actually print when it got to the top. Oh yeah, <clears throat> this condition right here doesn't include zero. I think, I mean, is there a way to make it more precise because, or do you want to say, oh, just add an equal? We could just add fine. equal there. Okay. Huh, 
still not printing out. Why is it not printing? Oh, don't add equal to both. Just one of them. Yeah. <coughs> or what would happen if you added equal to both? Why not? Would something bad happen? Yeah, what, what would happen? Um, if both of them were equal, oh, then the and statement, wait, no, wait. So, would it be a problem with the end statement? Uh, what would the... So, the condition would be... If... It's... Yeah, it's a problem with the... This condition. You said... You, you had... Uh... Oh, I guess, I guess it wouldn't cause a problem <clears throat> if they both had equals. It would never be true that they were both equal to zero, though. Because mm. this, they, they are not the same as each other. Yeah. Um... Oh, we're already calculating ball lower edge, so we don't need to calculate this separately. Um, oh, but we're saving this as bounce bottom, I guess. But why is mine not printing? Yeah, so the, the condition here, if you had that they were both equal to zero, um, nothing bad would happen, but this, it would never happen. That that specific condition would never happen. They would never both be equal to zero. Yeah. So you're saving the ball bottom prior is equal to ball bottom, and then ball bottom is equal to ball center radius plus ball. And then I'm going to calculate the bounce height by subtract what? What's that weight? Um... That would be the difference between the last bounce and the current bounce. Or that would allow you to calculate that. I think it would be better to make it look like this. So it will make sense, but it would just be the opposite. Because the Y is flipped. And then I was thinking of saying if ball, no, if bounce height is. So that's that's not the bounce height. Oh, that's the difference between. I mean, okay. That would I mean, be the difference between the bounce heights. Okay. I'm gonna, because that's what I was looking for. Anyway. Okay. Or, I mean,. Either way could work. Um, seeing if the bounce height is too small or seeing if the difference between the bounces are too small. And then that would, right? Um, yeah, you could do that. Oops. 
I'd say point point oh five. Why is mine not detecting the top? Am I missing something? Ball velocity prior is equal to ball velocity y. Ball velocity y is equal to plus equals gravity times that number. If ball velocity prior is positive, meaning it's going down, oh. And then it goes up? Isn't this what you have? Oh, you have prior on this, on the other side. Okay. That's what I, thought I had that before. Can you do it if and an if? Yeah. Okay. Oh, did not like that. Ball radius. Ball center Y, oh, whoops. There we go. Wait. Oh, I am detecting the wrong side of the ball. Wait. Oh, I didn't save. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now, uh, you're doing, So you, you probably want to stop. But, but I did. Oh, okay. I you need to click on the X on the window. Yep. Oh, not that. Okay, well. So you probably, you probably don't want to do this based on the difference in the bounce height. Probably just the bounce height itself. Yeah. Like, okay. how high off the ground is the bottom of the ball? Um, another thing we could do is subtract a constant in addition to here multiplying by a constant. We could also subtract a constant and uh, if the... sign remains the same after doing that both of these operations uh, then oh actually yeah that's another thing we could do we could just check what the ball velocity is going upwards here and when that gets low enough we just stop the ball and set it to zero uh that's actually kind of, uh, yeah. So 
nitrates less than 0 0.1. So let's see, when when we change it to going upwards, so that's negative, so so we want to say if some very small negative number is less than this number something like that then we can set it to zero Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is what I thought would happen. So the ball velocity is always going to be greater than negative 1. And then I set it to 0, but then over here it goes back up and it sets it to the gravity divided by a 1,000 times the kick. Um... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and then down here, and then, yeah. So I don't know. So yeah, here is gonna always. This is always gonna be increasing the. Um. And then I guess we could do an if statement here, controlling this. So, if ball okay. velocity here is greater than y or oh, we can just change this actually so we move this there and then we move this into an else actually we could do we could detect uh that the ball is at rest. Oh, you know what? If we get here and we detect that the velocity is small enough, in addition to setting the y value to zero or the velocity to zero, we should set the center, we should set the ball center y ah. to zero. Or it would be equal to. How big is the window? Wait. Uh, oh yeah, right. Uh, six hundred. What minus. is it? So. We don't have a name for it. We don't have a No, but we it. could do screen size square bracket. Oh, true. I think the sec this one here. So one. One. Minus ball radius. Oh, and then I don't here. Understand. Sorry. What? Now you go. Sorry. Uh, here we can only do this based on, and we can do this unless it's at rest at the bottom. So we could do like, uh, if ball. 
lost well, city. Well, just move this down here to the else. Okay. So move uh, this whole section down here. Else, like that. Uh huh. Wait, do you need this as well? Oh, uh, yeah. So this could be back up here. So where where do you want to move it, and what do you want to move? Wait, um, sorry, I have something pasted. I have something copied right now, and I don't want to lose it, so I'm just gonna paste it somewhere right now. Right now. Okay. Um. Well, I was saying like, so we can make the the like circumstance that. That the velocity is zero, then that means we change the ball velocity. Like when you want to change it to zero, then it turns into zero. If we don't want to turn it to zero, then we continue doing this. Okay, so here you have else, and then you have this line. Yes. Okay. But now you need to save ball velocity y prior just before making this change. So you would need this okay. line to be there or this line to be there as well. Also, uh, it is allowed to have the, if you have a single line, to have it on the same line as the else, um, but it is, I've literally never seen it done uh, in real Python code. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right. Not even like it's rare. I I don't think I've ever seen it. Okay. And then um, do we need this anymore? Ball velocity y. Yeah, I think we don't. <laughs> um, because oh, yeah. And if we don't need that, then we don't need this line to s we don't need the line saving what the ball velocity was because so we know right here that we're hitting the bottom of the window so we know right here after making this change that if the speed isn't upwards enough that it's not going to go very high. <laughs> so I think we should do that. Um, let's see. So we know for sure that we're changing directions because we just did this. Uh-oh. Uh, but we... What? What happened? The ball just went up forever. <laughs> okay. 
I think it might be because of this. Left, wait, no. Because of that? Wait, what? So we're either setting it to zero or we're changing it by some amount. But this time it Oh, didn't but we we first. have this now only happening when this is true. Mm. When it's at the edge of the window. We want this to happen even if it's not at the edge of the window. Yeah. Okay, I see. Um I mean, could we just put it? Because the thing is, if we put it up there, then it'll never the velocity y will never equal zero. Because then you just change it back to plus minus gravity. Right. So we could right here say if ball velocity y is not zero. Zero. Or yeah, is not zero. And let's see. If not, ball velocity y equals zero, and ball velocity ball center y equals screen size one minus ball radius um <gasps> excuse me so if that so this is the ball is resting at the bottom so if it's not resting at the bottom then we can do this. Uh, also, this condition is quite large, so uh, I could imagine, well, how, how might you, what might you do about that? Um, make, wait, no. Yeah, make something. Thanks. So wait, so this is checking when if the ball velocity is not equal to zero and the ball center is not um, resting. Yeah, so the ball is at the bottom of the screen and the ball has no speed. Hmm. Uh, and we forced that to be the case here. So, if the ball had very little upward speed, a small enough upward speed, we just stop it. And we make sure that it's exactly at the bottom of the screen. So we say if not. So if it's one, not, yeah. So instead of, so it would just be like if not this statement. Oh no. Sorry, no, that's wrong. 
Uh, so, know. uh, I would make a separate function. So, something like def is ball at. Oh, I completely forgot we can make functions. Bottom that takes in a ball center y and uh, return ball center y equals screen size minus ball radius uh, and in order to do that we have to define this after screen size and radius so I'll do it there uh, and then def is ball stopped which takes in a ball velocity y return ball velocity y is zero and then one more thing which says is ball uh stopped at bottom which takes in a ball oops ball center y and a ball velocity y and it returns is ball stopped ball velocity whoops y and is ball at bottom with, uh, with the ball center y and now that I'm writing this out it is extremely long <laughs> um, so I'm thinking Uh, about can I change that uh, I have that same thing your laundry is done <laughs> yes it is done um so uh, I think all of this is it's like a lot of words um we could make a ball class and then the ball class could have uh a x y Delta X, Delta Y, this would be the velocity in the X direction, the velocity in the Y direction, and then equals X, and so on. And the reason we might do this is... Because then here, all of these, instead of taking in something like ball center y, it would take in just ball. And then here, instead of ball center y, we would do ball dot y. And then, oh, I guess it also needs a radius. Uh, r. So dot r is equal to r. And then this would be ball dot r. And, oh yeah, also, all of these things 
would be methods. So, uh, sorry, I'm kind of covering a lot of ground here. Um, and then here, instead of taking in two different things, it would just be ball. And then here, let's say is ball stopped, ball. And then is ball stopped at bottom. Again, it only needs the ball. So that shortens that up a lot. Um, but one another thing that can happen with classes is that you take, notice how all of these functions take a, a ball as an argument. Mm -hmm. um, so in Python, what you can do with classes, actually this isn't specific to Python, but with classes what you can do is turn these functions into methods um, and now instead of the word ball you put self oh and then this is a, a special case right here self instead of having the ball over here turn into the word self, you put the word self over here. And now all of these are in the ball class. So we don't need the is ball at bottom. We could probably just say at bottom and stopped and stopped at bottom and then all of this goes away and oh i see <laughs> here is actually a typo this should be instead of stopped at bottom uh, it would just be at bottom and then this whole thing shrinks up um and we're a little bit over time um, but I've been thinking for a while it might be a good idea to make a ball class, <laughs> uh, because there's actually this, the amount that the code, uh, shrank just now, um, actually I think it probably grew a little bit, uh, overall, but each one of these things shrank a lot. And the amount that it shrank is a similar amount that the rest of this could shrink. So like all of these variables that we have that say like ball velocity y could say it could instead say ball dot dx. And actually instead of saying ball velocity y equals zero, now we could say stopped. Ball dot stopped. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I think, is a good thing to do next time. So I'm going to go into the notes, and I'll just... Uh, where is... Okay, I'll put it here. Uh, do convert ball code... Uh, into a class. Um, although, uh, we were in the middle of trying to make it so that if the ball is at rest, then we just leave it at rest. So maybe I'll add a to do about that. And that was this portion of the code. I think it's
So we started writing a function that would make this condition uh, smaller. And then I kind of got sidetracked into making that a super neat code, like super uh, well done code. And we ended up not actually finishing this thing. Mm, um, yeah. So I'll leave this to do. Uh, so we should, I think what we should do is finish this, make sure that it actually works. Um, make sure that it actually works um, around this code. Make sure that it actually works. Uh, run it, see if the ball stops bouncing uh, and stays stopped. Okay. And then we can convert the ball code into a class uh, if you want. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Um, I like this because it seems like the turning it into a class is actually pretty well motivated. Does it feel to you like that's worth doing? Um, yeah, for sure. I think I might need a little explanation again, just like an overview again. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. Okay, we'll do that next yeah, time. Continue. Yep. Okay. Um. Wait. Wait. Actually. Uh. Sorry. One more thing. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Uh. I was just. I forgot whether or not I asked you about posting the videos, and it looks like I have. So. Yep. Okay. All right. Bye. But thank you. You're welcome.